Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me today to check out some fall hockey pickups here on the channel. So I have a little stack here of kind of cheaper, I think probably $20 and under, but we'll talk through each of them. Uh, hockey pickups from recent weeks. Did one of these a few weeks back uh, in the summertime that I think I called summer hockey pickups. And uh, we've got kind of a sequel to that here with some fall pickups. Of course, the NHL season is right around the corner and uh, Excited to see some of these guys play, including Kale McCarr here. This is a second year UD Portraits insert from 2020. Um, not a card that I picked out specifically, uh, but I got this as like a throw-in um, with another McCarr card that was a little bit more expensive uh, that is actually not in today's episode. That'll be seen at some other time, but I do appreciate the free throw-in. And of course, McCarr, you know, arguably the most talented defender uh, in the NHL right now, coming off that Stanley Cup championship with the Colorado Avalanche, so happy to accept that one as a freebie. Uh, next up, been kind of slowly picking some of these up, and uh, these have definitely caught on among some of my other collecting friends. So I know I sent one of these to Sean over at Sean Stuff. Uh, saw an episode on uh, Peeps' channel where he fe you know featured a few of these recently. I think Ken from Ken's Cardboard uh, has been turned on to these as well, but from the 2013 Prism NHL hockey set. They did these immortalized inserts, which I, I've shown a couple of these now, um, including Gordy Howe, but found a seller who had this Larry Robinson for a very cheap coin. It was like $4 shipped uh, to my door. And as all of these have, you know, the etched Stanley Cup, you just, you can't beat that. Um, Robinson was a key player for the late 70s uh, Montreal Canadiens dynasty that won uh, four straight Stanley Cups uh, before, obviously, the New York Islanders became the dynasty to follow them, and then the Oilers. So um, from the mid-70s through the kind of mid to late 80s, there was really just three giant dynasties that ruled the, the NHL, and uh, pretty cool to get that nice, beautiful, shiny card of uh, Hall of Famer Larry Robinson. So a couple of defenders to start today's episode, defensemen, um, but we'll transition now into some offensive players which is more along the lines of what I collect. Um, here's a 90s insert from Donruss. This is a Dominators three-player insert featuring uh, Sergei Fedorov, Jeremy Roenick, and uh, the great one, number 99, Wayne Gretzky with the Kings. And you've got some nice rainbow foil. It's a little bit hard to tell. There we go. But it's a very nice-looking Donruss Dominators logo there. And, of course, you have the three names in rainbow foil as well. Um, this is another card that was, while not a throw-in, um, was sort of an accidental pickup or a, a pickup of circumstance because I got this in a lot of two Gretzky cards, uh, the other one being the Ringleaders insert from Top's Finest that I showed a few episodes back. And uh, that's probably a good segue into the next card because when I got that Gretzky Ringleaders, um, it was just a reminder to me how cool that insert set was and is and decided to look at who else was on the checklist and was able to find this card for $5 and free shipping. Got the Marc Messier ringleaders to go with the Wayne Gretzky that I showed off before. So these are, um, I know in the baseball world, these were included in top stadium club product, a slightly different design, obviously, that doesn't contain the Stanley Cup. Um, but in the hockey world, these were inserts in uh, Topps Finest Hockey in 1994, the first finest hockey set. So super cool. And, you know, much like the Larry Robinson this is one of the more uh, nicer examples of a glorified Stanley Cup on cardboard that you'll run into and just a perfectly 1990s card, quite honestly. Like, um, it was a wild time in the hobby back then and uh, really loved that Marc Messier and felt good to haul that one in for, uh, as I said, $5 shipped. Um, sticking on the cheap Messier train for a minute, um, did get an exclusives card of his from the late 90s. Um, this card is a checklist card, uh, much like they do today. You know, even back 25 years ago, Upper Deck would put star players on the front of the checklist cards in the flagship uh, release every year. And while they're not as desirable as, you know, that player's normal base card, they're a pretty cool way to get a pickup of, of a player for cheap. And in this case, you know, this is a late 90s. This is one of the first years that they did exclusives in hockey. Uh, in fact, I think this... Uh, so maybe, oh, I'm sorry, this is early 2000s, 2001. So maybe like three years into the parallel at this point. Um, card that's over 20 years old now, numbered out of 100 as all exclusives are. And of course, you know, the checklist back is what it is. But this card was uh, $7. And I think, 
when you look at Messier's place among the greatest players in the history of the game, you know, all attributes combined, his point totals, his number of championships, uh, being the only guy to captain two different franchises to a cup. Um, he's, you know, arguably a top 10 player in the history of the game, which goes back, you know, way over 100 years at this point. And to get 20 plus year old card of the man number to 100 or less, you know, for like eight bucks, you just can't go wrong there. So that's a, a little bit of an ex obscure addition there to the exclusives collection. And then I got one more on the Messier front before we transition to another dynasty. And this is a card that I've shown before, um, maybe a few months back. It's one of my favorite 90s hockey cards, period. And uh, I grabbed another copy of this because this popped up on eBay for like, I think it was $3 um, and like a dollar shipping or something. And that, that, that to me, that's just criminal. Um, this is the 9495 Parkhurst uh, Rink Collection, which is the Dufex parallel that you see kind of radiating out here from the, the uh, icon for the set in the lower left corner. Um, just a total sucker for Dufex. And uh, as with the Larry Robinson card and the ringleaders insert that we looked at, this is one of the better looks at, you know, Lord Stanley's Cup on ca cardboard that you're going to find. I, I think I may have featured this uh, in a VR that I did for Ken at Ken's Cardboard featuring my uh, Stanley Cup on cardboard collection. Uh, but this is a card so nice, I have no problem buying it twice and uh, did exactly that. So proud owner of two copies of that Dufex Messier card. And then uh, I've got two more cards to close it out here. They're both slabbed cards, and they're from a different dynasty that kind of followed the uh, Oilers. And in the early 90s, the Pittsburgh Penguins were the darling team of the NHL. Uh, of course, uh, they had Mario Lemieux and Yarmir Yager, that dual threat. And then they traded for Ron Francis from the Hartford Whalers, uh, won consecutive Stanley Cup championships in the early 90s. And my last two cards... Uh, feature kind of the two key players, along with Francis and Paul Coffey and countless others from those uh, early 90s Penguins teams. First from the 1990 Tops release, found this Mario Lemieux in a PSA Fine 9. Love this card. I'm a big fan of this design with the wooden stick motif uh, along the top. The Tops and Opeachy sets this year, they weren't like super popular, but um, not, you know, grossly overprinted either. This is really kind of the beginning of the Junk Wax Era, but I don't feel like you see these as much as you do like 1990 Upper Deck cards or 91 Score, things like that. It's certainly not a rare card. It's not even a scarce card. There's tons of these out there, but um, I love Lemieux and I love picking up his slabs, um, especially of his kind of flagship cards like this one. Um, aesthetically, I think this is a really nice layout with the yellow around the border. And uh, this card was $15 uh, on eBay. So again, you know, less than the cost of submitting to PSA even now. Uh, with their newer, you know, the return of the $22 submission rate, uh, you still couldn't even get that card slabbed for the amount of money that I paid to add it to the collection in a fine nine. So pleased with that. And then uh, similarly, his teammate and the other side of the uh, dual-headed beast in Pittsburgh there, even before the Ron Francis trade, grabbed this Yarmir Yager from the following year's top set, 1991-92 tops. Um, so this is a set that came immediately after the 90 that we saw the Mario Lemieux of. And what's cool about this one, this is Yarmir's like first proper tops card. Um, he was kind of missed or whiffed on by tops in 1990. Um, he was included in the score set and the upper deck set and some of these other companies um, did get him in, but tops did not produce a 1990 Yarmir Yager rookie. Um, there was an Opeachy Premier, some others, but tops whiffed. And so uh, this... You know, while it is a second year card, it also kind of represents uh, Yarmir's first proper tops release. And uh, what I also love about this set, 91-92, is this, uh, much like what happened in the world of baseball, um, from between 1991 and 1992, tops transitioned to like a much different, uh, thinner and more sturdy and lighter color cardstock than they had traditionally used, you know, going all the way back to the 50s. And uh, in, in the case of hockey, it's a little less obvious um, because this is a colorful back. But um, this is, you know, maybe the last year that has this kind of cardboard stock that we knew and loved as collectors growing up. Um, and certainly by 92, they had transitioned away from that. So uh, I, I kind of see 91, 92 Tops and Opeachy as like the end of an era. And this is kind of where I end my player runs of guys like 
you know, Gretzky and Lemieux, and uh, very happy to get the Yager from this set. It's not a rookie, it's not a significant card, but I just enjoy graded cards and uh, happy to add this one. And this one was uh, $10 on eBay, and I believe the shipping was free. So I, I don't know how people are just losing money by sending cards into PSA and then selling them for significantly less money than they paid to submit them, but uh, happy to be on the receiving end of that and uh, happy to add another cheap Yager slab to my ever-growing hockey collection. So that is a wrap. Uh, that's everything I had stacked up. We'll try to keep this episode brief at just 10 or 11 minutes here. Uh, but I certainly appreciate you stopping by to check out some of my new hockey pickups. And I will be back in the very near future with some more sports card content. Until then, take care.